The last couple of wins for United against City, against Spurs, have been absolutely magnificent. But for United, under Solskjaer, there are two different teams. The first one up against the top six, great form, great results, fantastic to watch. But up against the rest of the Premier League, United have struggled. So what I want to do in this video is run through these problems that United have had against weaker opposition, run through them in some real detail and then offer some solutions that I think Solskjaer can implement going forward to help solve this problem. Because United and Solskjaer have to solve this problem. If we do, it could transform this team. Before I do begin, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV and drop a like on the video if you fancy it. But let's get straight into this one. For the purpose of this video, I'm looking at the last 13 games that United have had under Solskjaer against top six teams versus the last 13 games that we've had against the rest of the Premier League. And the comparison is startling. Let's take a look at the form against the top six to begin with. Under Solskjaer, we've played 13 games, won seven, drawn four and lost two. Now, if you average that out over a season, that would give United 73 points, which was enough to finish third in the Premier League last year. That's fantastic form. But on the other hand, let's have a look at the form against the rest of the Premier League. And it's really horrible because out of those 13 games, United have only won two. We've drawn five and we've lost six of our last 13 and averaged out over a season. That equals 32 points. And that equals relegation in last year's Premier League. So the difference isn't just a little bit. They are polar opposites. And when you start to look at some of the results against the top six and some of the results against the other teams, you start to see some patterns. If you look at some of the results against the top six from this year, for example, it started with Chelsea on the opening day of the season. Clinical, brutal, exposed the space in behind with pace and we won 4-0. Then you had Leicester. It was a 1-0 win. United's only 1-0 win in the Premier League this season. It was gritty. We got the goal and we held onto it. And then you got Liverpool. Everybody expected United to get destroyed. But again, we exposed the space up against a team that played against us and attacked against us. And bar that defensive error towards the end, we could have had a 1-0 there. And then you got the City game, which was absolutely insatiable to watch for 30 minutes. And then it was a dog and determined defensive display for 60 minutes and United came out on top and we held out. Now the patterns in these games are very clear. When United go up against these teams that want to attack us and they leave space in behind, United's counter-attack is unstoppable at points. With James, Martial and Rashford, we have probably the fastest front three in the Premier League and when it goes right, teams really cannot do much to stop it. And so much is said about Solskjaer being a tactically inept manager. But look at the list of managers that his United team have beaten. Guardiola, Pochettino, Mourinho, Tuchel, Sarri. All top level elite coaches. And Solskjaer's United have beaten them. So to call him tactically inept in these big games would be just false. But as much as... Solskjaer has United singing in these big games, a bit like Louis van Gaal did at United. If we're singing in these games, we are muted in the games against the rest of the Premier League. And there really are so many examples that United fans won't want to remember, but to look forward, we have to look backwards and analyse. West Ham, for example, 2-0 away, completely outplayed. No excuses, just utter humiliation. Then a 1-0 defeat away at Newcastle, who were relegation form at that point, made to look like a lead two side. And Longstaff, not that one, the other one, got a goal on his debut. Then the 1-0 against Bournemouth. United going into that game in good form, but just fell apart. And a poor defensive mistake allowed Josh King to score. Then the 2 all against Aston Villa. You can't concede two against a newly promoted team at home, even if Grealish scores an absolute worldie. All of these were horrendous performances. And if you look at a lot of United's draws and losses in the Premier League this year against what would be considered weaker opposition, there are clear patterns. And one thing that certainly happened is individual mistakes. There's so many examples of that. Look at the one all against Wolves, for example. Paul Popper missed that penalty. We drew 
1-1. Crystal Palace, Rashford gets a penalty. He misses. We go on to lose that game 2-1. Bournemouth, sloppy defending for their goal. 1-0 Bournemouth. Sheffield United. United come back from 2-0 down to win 3-2. And sloppy defensive mistakes allow Sheffield United to score the equaliser 3 all. And littered throughout all of these draws and losses are individual mistakes. Poor finishing. Poor defending. Overall, as a team, there are so many individual errors. But there are more overarching problems which summarise exactly what the problems are. And the low block against United is clearly a problem. When teams sit deep and disciplined, we can't break them down. Now, I think that is more to do with the quality of the players in the squad than anything else. And that's why that low block is so effective. Because in these games, you need your special players to unlock a tight defence. If you're Man City, you're looking towards Sterling. You're looking towards De Bruyne. If you're Liverpool, you're looking towards Mane or Firmino or Salah. If you're Spurs, you're looking towards Eriksen. At United, we're currently looking towards Andreas Pereira, who has been so ineffective in that position. Jesse Lingard, who's not a number 10, and Juan Mata, who's just too old. We don't have that playmaker when we're desperate for somebody to add that sort of quality into that part of the pitch. And it's why teams, I think, have been so confident playing in this low block against us, because we don't have that player in our team at the moment who is capable of doing that. And that, for me, is why the low block has been so effective against United this year. But as well as it being down to the quality of the players, it's also down to the tactics as well, which I know a lot of you think about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. When plan A works, that counter-attacking works. It's brilliant. But when there's no space in behind to exploit, United struggle. And with no playmakers in the team, there's nobody there to change the style of football. And therefore, United don't really know what to do in that situation at the moment to unlock a defence. But unfortunately for Solskjaer, he was forced into this position by United not signing that new playmaker this summer. And Paul Pogba being out injured for three months certainly hasn't helped because if Pogba came in and has the sort of form when he comes back that he did in Solskjaer's first three months in charge with Fred and McTominay playing like they are in midfield, wow, that midfield three could really do some damage. But down to the poor recruitment in the summer, Solskjaer was left short in that position. And at the moment, we don't have that Michael Carrick, that Paul Scholes, that player who can sit back and be the quarterback and dictate play going forward. That's what we're missing. And that's why the low block is so effective. And of course, Solskjaer's tactics on the counter-attack, it does work against certain teams and not others, but I don't think we've got the quality in the team to break down that disciplined defence in a moment. And for me, all roads lead back to the fact that this quality in this squad is just not good enough. Not in comparison to City, Liverpool, and Spurs, which is, which is who United should be comparing themselves to. And Leicester, of course, who have been sensational this year. However, I do want to play devil's advocate with one suggestion here. There's no doubting that Solskjaer can get these players up for the big games. On the big occasions, the players want to play for Solskjaer, want to play for United, and they want to go out and do it. But does Solskjaer have that sort of underdog mentality where that's when he can get his players firing? And that in those games where United are expected to win, Solskjaer isn't the right manager to get those players believing in themselves that they can go out and just steamroll a team three or four or five or six nil. I think if we're going to praise Solskjaer for getting the players up for it in the big games, I think we can question whether or not he's capable of getting the complacency out of their system for the smaller games. And maybe that's a a symptom of the problem of United's squad and the culture that is still being built and that the complacency is still a virus that is infecting everything? I don't know. It's, I think it's a question that needs to be asked because the performances are so dramatically different against the top six and the rest of the Premier League that you have to try and find the root of the problem. And for me, that does go down to the quality of the squad. But if Solskjaer can get his players up for the big games. He has to make sure, as a manager, he gets his players up for the smaller games too. Now, for me, the solution is very simple and it doesn't involve changing the manager. I think we need two more transfer windows. I think we need the January transfer window where the playmaker comes in. 
we've sort of screwed ourselves by needing that player in January, but we need that player in January. We needed it in the summer and we didn't get it. And we also need another striker to offer either as an alternative to Martial or to come in and be better than Martial. They're the two signings we needed in January. And then in the summer, we need another overhaul. Three or four players out, three or four players in. And when that happens, I think we'll have the quality inside this squad that the low block will not be so effective against United next season, that against the lesser teams, United will start turning up. Because if we can hold this sort of form against the top six, and we've, we've held it. These 13 games are all the games under Solskjaer against top six teams. And we've got a fantastic, fantastic record in all of them. We need to combine that with better results against teams like Sheffield United against Aston Villa, against Wolves, against Crystal Palace, against West Ham, against Newcastle. These are the games where United should be expecting themselves to win. And maybe that confidence isn't just quite there yet. For me, it all boils down to the quality of the players. I think question marks can be put around Solskjaer's tactics against a low block, but it, for me, it still points back to the quality. And maybe whether or not Solskjaer has that underdog mentality as a manager. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. But United are so good against the big... And to see United do that against City, we didn't just beat City. It was... It was startlingly good. We absolutely fucking destroyed them. There's no other way to describe it. It wasn't a smash and grab, 1-0, sit back. It was 2-0, what could have been 4 or 5-0 if we were more clinical. And against Spurs... Pure domination and control, other than the defensive mistake that led to Ali's goal. Liverpool, control... Look, there's so many examples, there's no point running through all of them. But against the top six, we are a beast under Solskjaer. Against the rest of the Premier League, we're more of a meerkat. That needs to be solved. And I think the quality of the squad is the main issue. Solskjaer's tactics certainly contribute to it. And I question Solskjaer's ability as a manager to get his players up for those games where they should be pumping teams 4 or 5 nil. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But clearly it's United's biggest problem. But if we can solve it and keep the form against the top six, we will be a force to be reckoned with. No questions asked.